Hello everybody, that is here. Happy to see all of you on the other side of the screen. Welcome to my episode 3 of 2022 roundup of CPU blocks for platform LJ1700. Today we will have a look on Hitkiller 4, which is uh, one of the most popular blocks, at least in North America and Europe. And we will compare it with two other blocks that we already tested, Velocity and Velocity 2. For those of you guys who are interested how I set up my workstation, and also how I did the whole test, please watch episode 1. Not going to spend any time on that today. We'll, today we'll only talk a little bit about, not a little bit, we'll talk about results, but I also will talk a little bit about my experience, how I try to test and mount Hitkiller 4. So, I would like to say that, and repeat, I know that some of you guys wasn't as stoked as me about the mounting mechanism Velocity 2 but again now I experienced second block that has a traditional type of mounting with the posts and springs and some screws which are accessible from the front of the motherboard they're not as bad as Velocity 1 because they sit a little bit further from the motherboard and uh, for that reason it was a little bit easier to attach I didn't need to use pliers at least so I could do it with my hands, but still it was not as easy as Velocity 2. So I still think that this is very nice type of design. I really like it. The only thing that I don't like, and I agree with other guys who mentioned that in the manual it says that don't over tighten it because you might damage your motherboard. For that reason, I also was <laughs> using this uh, very expensive screwdriver to make sure that I don't do it. But one thing I would like to mention that with Velocity 2, I was getting very consistent results. So I, I did the three mounts, I basically got identical type of the readings from the test. With the heat killer, I experienced a little bit more trouble. Depending how you mount, the difference in temperatures can be quite dramatic. So I managed to mount it the best way and it performing, was performing pretty good. But I also managed to mount a few times when performance was not that great. And actually it's the first time I mounted and tested, the temperatures was kind of crappy, even worse than velocity. So I'm like, okay, we have to go to EK. And in my head, I was almost already sold out on velocity too. And I thought, okay, that will be my next block when I, I use those parts on my personal computer because now I'm borrowing to Dazzlab in order to, to do this test and, um, and then I mount the block second time and uh, I have a huge drop in temperatures and it's like what the hell so and when I mount third time the temperature was not as good as the second time but a, li a little bit worse so it's important that you mount it correctly uh, it seems that the best result that you have to lower the block very evenly down so it's it's more crucial than ever to tighten the thumb screws and cross pattern so the block goes down very evenly. If you have a little bit not flat, temperature goes out of the work. And I actually could see it on the imprint from the thermal paste. So if the thermal paste perfectly squished between the CPU block and the CPU itself, very evenly matter, that when you get the best result. If you have a little bit of extra thermal plate on any of the corners, it means that block was slightly misaligned, the, everything goes like not very good. So, so it's important for you. And my recommendation for any of you who are going to use Heat Killer 4 on new platform, test and make sure that you mount it correctly. If you think that the temperature is not perfect, remount it. So you can gain a lot of difference positive difference by doing so. Now, what we need in order to mount Heat Killer 4 on the new motherboard. What I call was pretty fast this time. They, they're not the fastest company in my experience, but this time they very promptly issued new backplate and set of springs and washers that fits new type of the platform. This is a old backplate that we had, you can see the distance between screws was shorter, so the backplate is smaller, and here we have a, a little bit bigger backplate that goes on the back of the LJ1700 type of the motherboard. Also, if we're comparing the springs and washers between the old and like 
updated version, you can see the springs is much more beefier, stronger, and washers is just huge. I don't know, 1.5 millimeters probably, something like this. So you can see that there's a quite a dramatic difference. So if you already have this uh, block in your possession, because this is a not new model, it's manufactured for quite a while, and uh, while other competitors might change their models two, uh, one or two times, this has continued to perform well and um, very conservative design. So you might already have it. And in this case, you need to buy two things. You need to buy new backplate and part number 1014. And also you need to buy a set of screws and washers and part number 14,079. So this is your two items that you have to buy and then you can use your block on the new platform. If you're buying uh, heat killer from scratch, you basically all you need to make sure is that you buy the version that already rated for LJ1700, it's usually right in the name. In this case, you will get proper set of uh, springs and washers with your block. Traditionally for water cool, backlight never included. I don't know, they consider it optional item and you have to buy it separately, which is confusing a lot of customers. So I have a lot of customers that uh, buy block and then next week coming back and buying backplate. And um, so if you're new to this thing, remember backplate is separate. In my personal opinion, it's, it's better to have it. And uh, also water cool itself considered it's optional. I think it's better to have it in order to have a proper distribution of weight on the motherboard, it's safer this way. Maybe it's paranoia, but just, just me. And also with a new type of motherboard, especially for Asus at least, you can see that they drill two set of holes. So you have a hole that works okay for the old coolers and you have a set of holes which is specified by Intel. So in this sense, I feel that backplate kind of make even more roll in order to proper distribution weight. So I recommend to use it. Now, when we out of the way with mounting, oh, one more thing I didn't mention. In the past, at least for all builds I did before, you actually can mount heat killer like long sides on the sides and short sides on top, so like this. But also if you, whatever reason for tube routing, you want to turn it 90 degree and mount it like this, it also works. With this motherboard, no, you can't do. You have so much stuff around the socket that they actually will interfere. So the only way to proper mount the block is like proper vertical position, not turn on 90 degrees. And they actually do it in very sneaky way on this particular motherboard. I was able to mount it at 90 degrees and um, it looks perfectly fine, but it's prevented me to tighten the everything at the very last like fraction of millimeter. So I, I got bad connection and uh, started PC and it will hit like 100 degrees right away. And I'm like, whoo, what's going on? But um, so basically pay attention how you mount it. It's, it's important. Luckily, I didn't damage anything by mounting in the wrong way and hitting some components on the motherboard itself. At least how it sounds like it works fine. So now about the temperatures. On the last video, I have uh, some feedback that people wanted to know. Let me roll back a little bit. So how I, I view the problem. I consider that the best result you get, it doesn't matter of what kind of voltages. If I can get lower voltages with this block, good for me. Uh, but obviously if you have a low voltage, you get lower temperatures. So some people say like, oh, I don't like it. We want to have the same voltages like uh, between different blocks and then we can see the cooling performance. I personally don't think so. Like if, if you have some crop, why I should have that crop, right? So I think that the best results wins, but I don't mind to share information. So in my table, I now include a voltage that was recorded as the best result for original velocity, which is, was 1.255 volts and see what kind of temperatures we get. But also I will include the best voltages I can achieve in general. So obviously original velocity, a little bit not the best block, or it still, it works, but it's not the best for this type of setup. So now we basically 
fighting between Velocity 2 and Heat Killer. I got very similar result, I would like to tell you. Stable voltage was basically the same, 1.235. I was able to deep 1.30 with the heat killer when with velocity, I wasn't able to even do it. It's it like hang right away. With the heat killer, I was able to run a little bit with, with lower voltage, but it never was stable. So I naturally I discounted. So we have the same type of voltage for between Velocity 2 and Heat Killer 4 and the temperatures also basically technically I have some fraction of degrees that Heat Killer went a little bit down but no it's not lab environment so basically we can say that they, they perform identical one little change that I think why I think Heat Killer had a little bit of the edge to my huge surprise I Heat Killer always high restrictive block period but somehow it was marginally higher flow than velocity 2 so with velocity 1 we have the 7 liters 87 with the heat killer i got 8 liters 08 it's just a little little bit but still it's give probably that fraction of degrees that allows me to go low voltages at least for a little bit and uh, for the both for lowest voltage I achieved and also for the voltage we achieved for original velocity Velocity 2 and heat killer acting kind of similar way So we have very very similar result So the only difference in this particular case I think between two It's your brand preference and, uh, and that's it Our design So it's you get pretty much the same result so but a good thing for those of you who have heat killer 4 if you're not sick of it so no problem just get the back plate and and it works fine if you feel like each for something new then velocity 2 is an excellent type of the choice so other than that I, I just simply don't see any reason like why you select one or two because like technically you get identical results after multiple type of testing multiple mountings if you do proper mounting which i already mentioned that with heat, heat killer it can be a little bit more finicky than velocity 2 you basically will achieve the same result so that's the end of uh, that little test next i want to move on to touch n type of the block which is uh, it's considered the same category like optimus uh, i don't have optimus so i'm not going to test that but uh, touch n unfortunately there's absolutely zero nothing available for lj 1700 so it has i try to mount it with all the um, LJ1200 or whatever 1500-50-51 type of the hardware and we'll see how it goes and see I hope we will be at least close to original velocity 1 because again the springs is wrong and mounting is wrong but we'll see how it goes but uh, that will be uh, next episode and uh, hopefully everything will go well and we continue to progressing with different models thank you for watching i appreciate your support again feel free to make comments i always love to read them see you soon in episode 4 bye